I'm going to start this off with a prayer, you guys. Heavenly Father God, first Lord, please forgive me of my sins. Anything that's not of you, any uncleanliness, any hate, any discouragement, any levels of hopelessness, oh Lord God, are lacking and trusting in you. I'm begging your forgiveness, Lord, but I, I need you. I'm asking you to help me to be able to articulate in my heart as much as the message you have for me to speak. That it might be able to touch somebody. Humbly asking, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What's going on out there, you guys? This is Sammy Leggett here. Representing Team JVS. JVS actually means Jesus versus Sin, if you don't know. Uh, here for another prayer time. I just got done eating my lunch. Um, I had planned on doing a video today because I've been pretty much reserved in my account of the way that... Um, I've been reserved because I've been listening to the voice of the Lord in everything that I've been kind of articulating and saying and, and, and doing when it comes to prayer time. Today, I really was attempting to go and work on like videos. I was trying to work on some reaction videos for our other JBS reaction channel. Um, I wanted to look at some anime, you know, maybe do some reactions. Um, I wanted to be excited for Rick and Morty tonight. Um, I wanted to go and just kind of dive deep into this whole, you know, release the Snyder Cut, A Your Cut, whatever, you know. But the reality is, the reality is, I cannot. I can't. I. <laughs> I cannot avoid. It's not just an elephant in the room, it's in the atmosphere. In the atmosphere, everywhere I'm going, everywhere I'm maneuvering around, the only time today that for real, for real, I felt like the atmosphere was a clean place of atmosphere it was when I was in my backyard with my wife and my son and we were just playing football. We were just throwing a football. Me and my wife and my son was out there watching us throw. That's it. This is the only moment today that I felt like this semblance of not just peace, but that the atmosphere wasn't a place of suffocating hopelessness, fear, hate, and feeling of injustice. This video that I'm going to be doing here today is going to be a very unfiltered version of any prayer time video I've ever done. And I don't know if I'll be able to effectively get all the points that I want. Because really it's not ultimately about me. But I will be bringing up something today. Local pastor in our community in Virginia... Um, he has been for the past three months, you know, really just pushing to the voice of God, walking in his uncomfortability, walking in like preaching to, you know, literally a congregation that's not actually there, you know, dealing with all the different circumstances going on inside of his heart, the wellness in his heart that's just like feeling as though as people feel depression, fear, and anxiety, suicidal thoughts. Um, he's feeling all of it. He's letting it well up on the inside of him. You can tell it from every single message he's doing. He's hitting these points and just hitting them and hitting them and hitting them. And I was kind of like, today I talked to my wife. I was like, I'm really curious to see, you know, you know what he's going to say, what other pastors are going to say. Given the circumstances of what's going on right now from George Floyd on back and the way that the atmosphere right now is in such disarray. Way, how is he going to be able to articulate this into an actual message effectively? And so he goes and he brings on a police captain that he knows, I think it's a part of the congregation, and he brings him up. Before he even does any kind of message, after you know everything is done, he asks him, he probes him, what does it really mean to protect and serve? What is these bylaws that are actually supposed to take place? What is it 
what is the real fundamental difference as to what these cops did to this man versus what should actually be done? And you know, the police captain went into the details of the procedural, like how it's not supposed to be, but you can tell even through the past he's very reserved. Like what's going on inside of him is really kind of like, he wants to fire off. But the whole epicenter why he, he was doing this and his end resolve was that he didn't want just, all right, justice is definitely, it's got to be done. This has to be some levels of justice. But for him, the outcome, the outsource, at the end of the day, he wants to place a reconciliation. The question that I'll ask for you guys, and this is where this is going to be very hard, because I'm going to start to talk to you guys in a different tone. I'm going to be talking to you guys of how I, as an African-American Christian, that has a multitude of different friends internationally and all over the world that I love, that I care about, that know me, that care about me, how am I really feeling right now? And I'm going to be going into that. But I'm also going to be going with this place of the voice of the Lord. And I'm also going to be coming from a place of, of heart that is outside of what I want. <laughs> so forgive me for anything. And if you feel slighted one way or another, that's not my intent. But the question is, with these circumstances that are happening right now, the injustices, the murders, the deaths, the devastation that has happened against minorities, against other people, do we really want, do you really want justice and then reconciliation? Or do you want justice and this feeling that nothing is ever going to really change? But you want it. You're striving for it, you think it has to happen, something's got to go, but do you really believe that there's actually something of a semblance of change that can happen? Do you really want a level of reconciliation with our law enforcement, with our government? And I can tell you, there's probably half of this listening to this right now that no, that's not, there's, how are you going to sit there and want something that you don't even believe is even possible? That whole essence of belief that, okay, yeah, there's going to be a moment, there's going to be a presence of time when we're going to be in reconciliation and feel as though that us as black men or black women, that feel as though like, you know, we go out, that we're not going to be looked at differently or judged incessantly um, just for the way that we look or the way we dress, the way we carry ourselves. There's, there's half, of, half of us are not. It's because it's that's what, all we've known. But it's kind of like, as a Christian, that that's what I'm praying for, that's what I'm striving for. And I think that this pastor, that's what he knows, that's everything that he is in him. That's what he is hoping and praying and believing for. That's the whole essence behind belief. But it's hard to sit there and get to that place of believing to this path of reconciliation when you're dealing with your own pain and hurt. I can tell you, there are tons of people that I know right now, white and black and everything else. But specifically, my black brothers and sisters that are in pain, horrible pain. I did a whole video on what I meant. I just didn't go into the specifics of what it meant for me. But I'm telling you that if you right now, and I'm giving you this as an example, this is your cup, right? This is you. This is a symbolic of you. If I go and I take and put like ketchup in this and just kind of swirl it around, and then I go and try to put like some water in it so I can be able to drink it. Do you think that this water is going to taste like water? Or do you think it's going to taste like ketchup with water? It's diluted. Because what's right here is the pain and the gunk and the stuff that right now, that there's, there's almost no way of getting past it for God to be able to heal us. And <laughs> the first part of this is really admitting like what's going on on the inside of our hearts. And yes, there needs to be change from law enforcement, from government. We have to go and do our parts when it comes to going to the polls and voting. Um, we have to go and be diligent in the way that we move and maneuver through this path. Am I saying, am I condoning people going and riding? Absolutely not. Do I understand it? Yes. Do I think it is a path to be able to get us to a place that we need to be? No, I think it's another excuse for somebody to take us out. And it's a whole other excuse for the enemy to put us back 
And I mean the enemy, I'm talking about Satan. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. So if taking the message right now from this pastor that went and, you know, kind of took out his time to really kind of like bear down on what's right, what's wrong, and this path of reconciliation without admitting to certain aspects of how this is actually projected onto him is something that we can't even receive or if it's like hard for us to be even digest that because we're so much in pain and hurt then how is the Lord going to be able to maneuver us through it it's not and now I'm going to talk to you guys how I'm feeling I am a I am an African American man I grew up in a small town and I I now live in a very big city and I have tons of friends all over the world and it breaks my whole heart watching videos of men, women, and children murdered, killed. Like, I am not military. I, I have seen death. I've, I've literally been in rooms where I've watched people leave this earth. I have been around circumstances of people that have witnessed death from murder, from just lack of health. Um, so it's not like I haven't been around it, but it's different to see a person at gunpoint, at knee, at no reconciliation of what's happening, just die. That hurts. That, it takes everything in me to not be in a place of anger or fear. Everything. And I don't do it on my own. I do it through the Lord. And there's times where I'm not even asking the Lord. The Lord sometimes is literally pushing into me. Like, no, you cannot. No, I am with you. No, like, this hurts, this pains, but I have something more in store for you. Greater things are yet to come. And I hold on to that with bare life. But make no mistake. Do I think if I go outside right now, and I walk down the street, not in, like, in some baggy clothes, right, and a mask on. Do I feel like I will be assessed and judged differently than somebody else? Absolutely. Do I believe when I'm going in, in like, in a car and riding down the street and I'm in the wrong side of the neighborhood or at the, at the wrong nighttime, that there's a possibility that I'm going to get pulled over even if I didn't do anything? Even, even if I didn't do anything. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And that is the sad reality that I have to tell my children that I have to take in consideration leaving my home. And do I, in my heart's value, believe that, you know, right now, you know, my leadership the leadership that's governing this country cares whether or not this is a place of fear that is justified or should I should be feeling? No. Do I think that there are people there that have the capacity to do something about it or have the capacity to actually listen? Yes. But what do I do with that? And that's, that's ultimately... I'm, I'm, I'm just doing a small narrative because I'm talking about just a few different moments or accounts of just being an African American man. Like, for real. Like, I, if you go to our Jesus vs. Sin page, I've had conversations with me and Joe. We've gone in, in prayer, for not just, you know, our black community, 
but different massacres, different people that have been getting killed. Like the massacre that happened in Paris, massacre that happened in London, like Sandy Hill. Like there's been so many different amounts of death that we have seen that honestly, from a media standpoint, the, the narrative, the thing, the issue is with the media is that they benefit from a lot of the negativity and the things that are happening because it, it bodes more views and they can add more conjecture and even like when it comes to the actual numbers of actual death that are from police with minority versus Caucasian those numbers aren't even tallied so we don't even really know right and the thing is they, it doesn't help it really doesn't help but it's a, it's a fine line with it because you want to be aware of what's really happening in your back door. You don't want to sit there and be on the other side of like being completely oblivious to it and desensitized of every single time there's a person who's dead on the street or every single time that somebody's just been killed. Because once you become void of emotion, then what's the whole point? Like, to be sheltered? Like, no. So I'm saying that there is a hard middle ground that people are at right now that... I'm just vocalizing for you guys that this is hard. This is hard. Like me even going and praying is hard. It's harder probably than it ever has been. It's not because I don't have the capacity or the ability to be able to give. It's that there's levels of my emotion that could literally be fleeting to somebody's soul if projected the wrong way because I'm coming from me. And that's the reason why I say, from a leadership standpoint, as a pastor or somebody, am I saying that it should be watered down? Absolutely not. But I do know that if the voice of the Lord is telling you to specifically preach a certain kind of way, to be able to truly bless and impart and incite hope versus hopelessness, then carry on is not for me to judge or assess. But I am saying that there have been murderings. There have been deaths. And none of it has any justification regardless of what happened. Right now, I think that the case with uh, George Floyd is under federal investigation. There have been other videos that have come out show that it may have been brutality within the confines of the back of the police car during the time. After. Then they did what they did. Put their knee on this man's neck until he died. Which normal procedure, I would assess it would be knee to the shoulder then handcuffed, then maneuvered out. But that's not what happened. And so, I'm just letting you guys know that this isn't easy. And I am praying and pleading with God for you guys just as much as I am for myself. And for those people out there that are, you know, you know, Caucasian or, you know, are not being directly affected by this, but they feel as though they can't hold back anymore. They can't stop and just watch anymore. I get it. And I appreciate it. And we as a minority appreciate it. We love it. We thank you. Um, so take heart in that. That I'm not I'm not play, doing this as a place of division. I'm just talking from an actual place of reality that I have to assess. It's like when in March, when I started to see like the COVID cases come, and I, I was like, I was fearing. I was, I was dealing with levels of fear because I was like, I'm still in this government building. I'm still dealing with like, I don't know whether or not we're gonna be able to work from home. Like, I am terrified that I'm. What, what are the realities? What are the, I was in my. I, you can, you can, you can't talk to the people, but there are certain people I talked to. I was like, what are the procedures behind this? If this gets really, really bad. I said this months before anything happened. Maybe it was discernment from God. I don't know. Um, but I was like asking, I was like, how are they going to actually be able to actually withhold or facilitate these many people that could end up potentially dying or being sick from this? What is the procedure if you do get sick? 
How are you going to be able to manage that so you don't get your family, you know, infected? I'm asking these questions before this even became protocol. I was telling my wife, legit, yo, we need masks ASAP because this could get bad. Now everybody has to wear masks, you know? And so even then, like, I was like dealing with this place of fear. And I was like, I had to assess whether or not my leadership cared whether or not, you know, my outcome was going to be positive or negative. I had to assess that. And then after I assessed it, I still had to go and maneuver in this place of forgiveness, trust in the Lord, and doing my job. And that is not easy. How are you going to sit there and still work when you feel as though the people that you're working with or for are not for you? That's nothing but the grace of God. And that's why I, I, I say it all the time. we got to be in a place of... of uh, um, I'm trusting the Lord. We have to be in His presence. Like, we gotta be. Like, it's, it's impossible to sit there and go into this place of reconciliation and reform in this place of real change. And I'm not talking about a band-aid change. I'm not talking about, like, one specific situation being changed. I'm talking about everything. The whole entire regime being completely transformed. And then bring it to a place that we can be able to trust one another. We can be able to love one another. We can be able to co-mingle together. Because right now that's not happening. And I'm telling you, the only way that that can be able to happen is through God's voice. Through being able to seek his face and advocate for mankind. Now, I'm going to say this when it comes to the whole riding. There's been plenty of different things in different videos of a lot of rioting and things that are happening that have been behind the scenes and none of it's good. And with the rioting, burning your own homes and places and inciting violence Regardless if you're African American, minority, or Caucasian, all it is is the opportunity for the enemy to be able to use it against us. Enemy to go and put people in harm's way. Opportunity for COVID-19 cases to be on the uproar, on the rise, and opportunity for those that are already in a place of power they're already fearing what could happen or fearing you to incite violence against you. And I'm not saying that we should do absolutely nothing. I'm not. I'm saying that this isn't the answer either. The hard reality is we have to deal with what's on the inside of us constructively and through God's progression. And that is something that is not easy in any shape, form, or regard. And that is why I pray. That is why every single video that I've put out that I've leaned more towards God's voice beneath. Um, but it's not easy. It's not easy at all. So I'm going to go ahead and close out in a prayer. Um, again, this is not the normal form of doing this. Normally on the weekend, it's like me going and redoing and rewatching what you guys put up. But I already knew that this was the video that I was going to be making. Even yesterday, it was kind of like, I don't know. <sighs> Precious Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, Lord God, for who you are, your love and your care and your grace for us and with us, Lord.
Father God, I pray right now for the family of George Floyd. I pray for their, their feeling of loss, their grief, and their feeling of injustice given the circumstances that happened to their loved one. I pray, oh Lord God, that they might be able to find your peace as much as get to a place of getting past their grief, feeling a form of justice, and boating to a place of reconciliation for humanity over there. Father, I pray right now for all my friends, family, that are right now just in pain, Lord. Father, I pray right now that you, from the inside of their heart to the outside, that you shower them with your security, Lord. They might be able to feel as though that there is a capacity of healthy change, Lord. There is a pathway that goes beyond what justice looks like from the progression of man, but to a place of real intimacy with you in connection to allowing real reconciliation real change, Lord. I pray, oh Lord God, that people might be able to have the capacity of being able to hope and believe in that pathway, Lord. Father God, I'm praying right now for those that are in perpetual pain, Lord. Remove the scars. Remove the grievances, the hatred, the aspiration to incite levels of violence from their own pain and fear, Lord. Father God, I pray right now that you just might nurture people's hearts and their minds, Lord. I pray, oh Lord God, that you might be able to incite discernment, knowing which way to go, what's the best pathway to getting to a place from justice to reformity to real change, Lord. Father God, I thank you for all that you're doing with and through our lives, Lord. Even in this place now, I pray right now for those that have been outside and around, that they are protected, Lord God, from the snares of the enemy. I rebuke and bind um, that flux of COVID-19 cases or sicknesses, Lord. I pray you just might surround us, Lord. With your hedge of protection, your hosts and legions of thousands of angels can't run about us, protecting us, O oh Lord God, and keeping us, O oh Lord God. More than anything, O oh Lord God, I pray right now against division, Lord. division of humanity and you, division of communities, Lord, division of the feeling of hope versus hopelessness, Lord. I rebuke and bind hopelessness in the name and by the blood of Jesus. I pray, O oh Lord God, that you might cover our nation, O oh Lord God. That the ground might be able to be rained upon by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we might be able to see things bloom in ways that we've never seen before. That out of the ashes, O oh Lord God, out of this terrible circumstances that are happening around us, Lord, because you are with us, O oh Lord God, you are there to shine upon those drops, those seeds, O oh Lord God, that we might be able to grow deeper and closer to you than we ever have, Lord. Father God, I just pray right now for this wellness of our hearts, Lord. People's hearts are just shattered right now, Lord. And I pray, O oh Lord God, that you refortify our spiritual harmless, Lord. You refortify our spirits and you refortify our hearts, Lord, because we need you more than anything, Lord God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome, Lord God, to just keep us. I pray, O oh Lord God, you continue to hear our hearts. I pray, O oh Lord God, we might continue to confess to you what's on the inside so that we might be able to feel not just vindication, but levels of security and peace just walking outside Lord. Father God, I'm praying oh Lord God against fear in the name and by the blood of Jesus. Rebuke in mind confusion because you're not an author of it. Lord. 
Let your presence be made known, O oh Lord God, for all of us. I pray these things over my family, over my friends, and over our nation, and ultimately over the world, O oh Lord God, because the world is filling it as a whole. I pray all these things in your name and by your blood. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus loves you guys so much. And this moment and everything that we've been dealing with since, honestly, since January of 2020, um, from fear of war, um, from insecurity of what's going on in the political scene, from COVID-19 until now, like, it has been, it has been hard. None of it has been easy. But I implore you to truly ask God for help. To truly believe that God can be able to really help us and maneuver us through a better pathway. And one thing I always say and put on the inside of my heart, even when I can't find joy, even when I can't find happiness, even when I feel like completely dissected on the inside that I'm believing that greater things are yet to come. I truly believe it. And I speak it over my wife, I speak it over my son, and I speak it over my friends and family, and I'm speaking over you guys that greater things are yet to come. Even in spite of our darkness right now, even in spite of the pain, even in spite of the injustices, even in spite of the murders, that greater things are yet to come. So let's be able to trust that God can do that. Just ask him. Jesus loves you guys, so do I. Talk to you guys later. Peace, guys.